you see Excel operation. We see a list of databases and their states. We have one database on port 8563 and it's currently running. You can shut down or restart it here or change the settings. For example, you can enable or disable auditing. Exasol stores its data in blocks. These blocks are stored in volumes on the storage layer, Exastorage. Here we see a list of storage volumes. Volumes can store persistent data. That is the data which is stored in your tables. It also includes the indexes, statistics, the database metadata, and so on. We also can see a volume for temporary data here. It stores intermediate results of queries. For our persistent volume, we have a redundancy of two. This means that every block is stored on two machines in our cluster. If one machine fails, the data is still accessible on another machine. Let's click on a database instance. Here, you can manually start a backup. Under Backups, you see a list of all available backups, and you can immediately restore them. Under Schedule, you can plan periodic backups. What we have here is a full backup every Sunday. Let's go back to Exastorage. Both the persistent and the temporary volume have the type data. The other type we see here is Archive. This is for storing backups. Archive volumes can be local or remote. Local means backups are stored on our machines in the cluster. Remote means backups are stored somewhere else, for example on an FTP or Samba server, on Amazon S3, HDFS, or on a local archive volume of another Exasol cluster. ExabucketFS is for storing custom files that you need on all nodes, for example, Python libraries, statistical models for your R UDFs, or JAR files. Another thing we want to show you in Exa Operation is the monitoring functionality. It shows you log events like the system load, information about database startups, backups, errors, warnings, and so on.